Welcome to the Boneyard Podcast, a limited series roundtable discussion with the cast of Bones, a gripping new social horror presented by People's Light and written and directed by acclaimed writer-director Steve H. Broadnax, welcome. The third. The third. Don't yeah. forget the third. <laughs> yes, <laughs> don't, forget, don't forget the third. Yes. Um, so Bones, I'll just read a little bit about it, is a, is a, a social thriller. Um, and the premise of the play is uh, uh, the knight takes a chilling turn over a game of dominoes as childhood demons are exposed. And a group of fri- friends question everything they think they know about masculinity and what makes a man. So in later episodes of the podcast, the whole cast will be here and we'll be um, drawing inspiration from the play and discussing some of the themes of the play and how they resonate with us or apply in our own personal social lives. But today it's just you. So we get to talk to you, ask you all the questions we need to know about the piece, how it began and uh, and how you found how it found its way here to people's life. Mm-hmm. So let's get started. Why? Um, what is Bones? Talk to us. Bones is a social horror stage play um, that um, investigates masculinity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, and what was the origin of the piece? I know some of the cast members were a part of like an earlier conversation that you had that was just the germ of the play. I think Eric yep. was a part of that conversation and then it sort of grew and expanded from there. But can you talk to us a little bit about what the origin of the play was? Yeah, I, I wanted to create a space where black men specifically could get together and be their authentic selves. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I knew I wanted to write a, a piece about masculinity um, and safe spaces for black men. Black so men. I, yes. Mm-hmm. So I gathered four guys. It was Bajorn Dupati, um, Hakeem, um, um, Eric, and myself, we all got together and I invited the guys together just to eat food, drink, and talk about things from sex to relationships to um, our association with police, Mm -hmm. um, education. We just had a conversation amongst black men and I invited them to just really tell the truth and be their authentic selves and be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And a great, a lot was came out of that discussion, mm-hmm. which was recorded, and then that became the so seed. So they knew. I was like, you were yeah. just like seeing. Oh, no, no, no. They knew that I was recording, gotcha. and that became the seed to the play. And um, and why Domino's? And, and what is Domino's and the connection to Bones? And th- during that first conversation, did you, were y'all playing Bones? No. Okay, so like, where did, where did, how did Domino's and become a part of the equation that I wanted to and then so when constructing the play I knew I wanted to be horror one of my favorite genres so I knew I wanted to use the the the, the genre of horror and so then thinking of the activity or a place that I can place these men that black men go maybe t- that express themselves or that we can be authentic and I thought of barbershop um sports events or when black men gather together, or spades or dominoes, in which I knew about, um, places where black men get together and, and there's a sense of competition, there's a sense of machismo, there's a sense of masculinity, that dominoes was what I landed on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so talk to me a little bit about um, why horror, specifically, what is your connection to horror um, and and why you wanted to present because we don't see a lot of horror on Play. stage, no, right? No. I'm, 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 as you as I'm sure you are seeing, it's very uh, Rare. challenging yes, <laughs> to, yes. to, 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 say to the least. accomplish. Yes, yes, you know, in a in a in a seamless and um and, and believable way. And so, um, what 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 was the impetus for horror and what is your connection to horror specifically and why you chose to to add horror the horror element to this play yes horror is definitely one of my favorite genres horror and then the love genre are my two favorite story genres but in horror being an allegory for taking our fears and externalizing them and as we watch our protagonists um conquer a fear Mm -hmm. so i've always thought it would be a great allegory for um the black experience in america that how that because so the demon can be like m night Shyamalan. nim like Shyamalan is one of my favorite horror directors and writers and so jordan uh peel like Mm -hmm. would get out so i some of my influences were like get out them us um Lovecraft. Mm-hmm. These are things where Misha black, Green. yeah, Misha Green, black horror has been put on 
on on for film. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, wow, take those um, as allegories to teach us how to um, combat the demons in our fears. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times the demon can be racism, it can be classism, it can be, um, you know, toxic masculinity. Whatever mm -hmm. the thing is that we watch our protagonists conquer. Mm -hmm. That's why I thought it was the best genre for horror, which was my favorite. And then black horror specifically yeah. on stage. Yeah. And um, there is a history of, right, like um, uh, sort of a sordid history of horror and black horrors mm -hmm. in terms of film or cinema in the cinema space. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, James Baldwin wrote this like sort of scathing response to the original Exorcist film yep. um, in his essay uh, titled the, the Devil Finds Work. Yes. Where, you know, his kind of commentary, his social commentary on it was the fact that white audience members get to go to the theater or experience a film and be shocked and amazed and scared at a sort of um, fantastical or fictitious world Correct. when um, black Americans in this country living. are quite living that horrific experience every day or when our mere existence is the boogeyman yep. to other people, yep. right? And so this uh, sort of like that parallel or sort of like taking the, uh, the the genre of horror and as an allegory to externalize our fears or externalize, you know, like you said, Jordan Peele does that mm -hmm. when Get Out, right? Like mm -hmm. these sort of social thrillers that look at these societal ills, mm -hmm. um, personify them and make them, um, you know, sort of personify them and, and create an allegory where we can actually look at it externally exactly. and give us a launching pad to sort of investigate and sort of dismantle or correct some of those wrongs. So, correct. Super exciting. Um, what's your favorite horror film? Top of my head, I love Wes Craven. Mm -hmm. I love what he did with the genre. So, Nightmare on M Street, that kind of like that, that, um, franchise mm -hmm. um part three would be one of my favorite um because Lawrence fishburne is in it so and exorcist exorcist i think is the blueprint mm -hmm. to especially with the exorcism kind of um genre of the of the horror film so nice. i would name those two nice uh, all right so let's transition a little bit and let's talk about this cast okay the cast is a bit saucy it's a bit yes. swaggy. Okay. It's kind of fly. Okay. You got a lot of faces in there. Some film and TV folks. Yeah. Apple TV Plus. Yeah. Netflix. Yeah. Stars. Yeah. You know, um, uh, some guys out here who are currently in the field doing some really dope work um, of, across different genres. Mm -hmm. um, so talk to me a little bit about how the cast came together and and what is the Steve Broadnax recipe for building a cast and building a room? Um, I think I knew I know these guys. So like Eric, um, um, I've worked with for a long time. He's a long time collaborator of mm -hmm. mine. Elijah, mm -hmm. I've known him. I'm also a um, professor at a university, Penn State University, and I teach. I'm head of MFA directing. So, but at the time I was head of acting, and I taught acting as well on a university level. Um, I've been in education for over seventeen years. Um, and I've, I've taught those two. Mm -hmm. So I taught them, and then to see them go out and be as profound and successful, I'm very proud of those gentlemen. Um, so I, I, I've had long-standing relationships with them. Mm -hmm. um, you, um, we've worked together at another theater prior to this, so I just recently met you within a year mm -hmm. that we worked together, so I enjoy your work and what you brought to the process that Thank we you. did in L.A. at the Geffen and Lee Colston's um, Work shout out to Lee, Philly, um, Philly playwright. Yes, yes. Uh, Philly playwright. Um, and working with you on his work, and then um, Elijah uh, and John. John, I work with at the Globe in LA. Mm -hmm. So I've known these men in different uh, aspects, mm -hmm. and so to invite them specifically on this work, I just thought it would be a mm -hmm. you guys will will be good crew yeah. together. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, I think the the formula for my room is collaboration. I like collaboration. Wherever it it it, it whoever has the best idea gets the yes. You know, and so I like to come in rooms. Um, I challenge people to be their authentic selves. I believe people before plays. Mm -hmm. So I'm allowing people to just really come in and um, investigate the work and invest in the work and mm -hmm. collaborate. Freedom to be your authentic self is a yep. line from the play, yep. but that's that's important because it seems to be the ethos of your of your whole creative collaborative process. Correct. Um, amazing. Uh, last thing, um, 
what do you hope that audiences will take away from this play? Like, what is, Ooh, you know what good. I'm saying? Like, yeah. what, are you, what are you hoping? They come and they see the play and they experience Bones. Maybe they're black, maybe they're not. Maybe they know this experience, maybe they don't. What is the sort of resounding thing that you hope audiences will take away? That I'm hoping that audiences will take away that what you put into young boys, specifically black men, but what you impart or teach young boys can and will haunt them into their adulthood. That what you and how you um, teach young men about being men, that will affect the rest of their lives. And that is the seed that can haunt them through their adulthood. Mm. So I'm hoping that that is what audiences can see the impact of that programming as into little boys. Mm -hmm. mm. Got to start at the root. There you go. Yeah. Thank you, Steve H. Broadnax. Thank I'm you. excited to see this play. I'm, I'm going to be Me front too. row. <laughs> so close, I'll probably be on the stage. Yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time of to course, course. talk about the, the play and about its origin. And, and we hope everybody out there is getting excited about the, the play as well. Um, just a reminder, you can get your tickets at peopleslight.org. The show is running September 22nd through October 15th. Um, and uh, keep an eye out on People's Light social media uh, YouTube channel and website for future episodes of the Boneyard podcast. And if you are feeling generous and want to help us continue this conversation as we move forward, you can make a donation at peopleslight.org forward slash support. The link will be in the bio and we look forward to seeing you at the theater. Thank you. <laughs>